Hi, I'm Jonathan Katz Moses, and today we're going to build this Nakashima inspired shop stool slash side table. I haven't decided yet. For those of you who've been watching for a while, you know that my stool broke not once, but twice during the QA with my wife. And this gave me an excuse to build something that was not only gorgeous, but would support my large frame. I inlaid into abalone butterfly key in here and I actually did a whole video on that so there'll be a link down in the description if you want to see that in detail. This was the first project I've ever done where I milled the lumber myself. A friend of mine had given me a hundred year old walnut tree. I mean one of the most beautiful trees you've ever seen. They don't exist this large in nature anymore. We bought a bandsaw mill and milled up the lumber and kiln dried it uh, for about six months off and on and got it down to about eight to twelve percent. Uh, the slabs are now on my website and actually I'll ship them for free anywhere in the lower 48 states for the next month. And don't worry, if you miss that window, shipping is actually pretty reasonable. Um, so let's get into this build. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and now let's mill up some lumber. I started this build by making templates for my top and bottom stretcher. I modeled them off of Nakashima's design by looking up pictures online uh, and sort of using my best guesstimate. I think it came out pretty good. I cut them down to size on the bandsaw and then brought them directly to the line on the wide belt sander. Then with some double stick tape, I applied my templates to my stock material. Great little tip here is to use the table of your bandsaw to make sure that both the bottoms are flush. I then trimmed my stock up so it was close to the template and took it over to the router table. I used this flush trim bit by Whiteside. It's a double bearing bit. I'll leave a link down in the description. This thing is a beast. I mean, it tore through everything like it wasn't even there. I took the top bearing off so I could route with the grain and then flip the piece over, put the top bearing back on and remove the bottom one so I could do the same thing. This allowed me to route safely around the entire piece. I then identified a center line and squared it off at the ends. This way I can cut my ends parallel. This line is going to be really important throughout the entire build because it's what we're going to base our joinery off of. The middle of this slab looked like it could crack down the road, so I finally got to do an abalone butterfly key. I did a really cool video on it if you want to check it out. There'll be a link down in the description. And now we get into the fun stuff. It's time to start the joinery. I made a jig for cutting out the bridle joint on the bottom and top stretcher. Again, this center line is really important because this is what we're gonna align with our center line on our post. The distance between these two lines is gonna be the exact width of your slab. This is the prototype for the Cat's Moses stop block, which I have for pre-sale on my website. I'm gonna release it in a couple weeks. I cut down to just over the tallest point of my stretchers 
as long as you go bigger than your stretchers, it doesn't matter. And here I am transferring that center line to my 90 degree stop. Make sure not to glue the center piece because we're going to remove that here in a second. I then transferred my center line around both of my stretchers. Did I say the center line was important? I can't remember if I told you that already. I then removed some material out of the center of my jig so it wouldn't impede the router. I then made it mark an eighth of an inch down so I could set the depth of my router. You just keep on talking. I see your dog needs walking. Uh -huh. Your folk drive you insane. Mm -hmm. I know, yeah, that's true. Of course, you ain't the one to play. Keep on talking to me. When transferring joinery lines, a marking knife is key. I marked out the edges of my bridle joint all the way around and then used a chisel to align my jig on every side. This made it so that everything lined up perfectly. I just want to see you move. I just want to see you move. Sure, I like to listen. It's not like I don't want to know. It's just that you've been talking to me three nights in a row. I think it's time to let go. Forget the past, just lose control. Now I'm not sure if this was the right decision, but I thought it might be easier to just resize my jig. So I trimmed it down to the length of my bridle joint and cut it in half, and then reattached it by putting it around my stretcher so that it was the exact width of the positive that was needed to go around it. I then attached a stop for the router on the top of it, and then attach it to the slab, making sure to transfer the center line. I decided since this might become a shop stool that I was going to attach the top and bottom stretchers with lag bolts for extra support. So I drilled a large recess with a Forstner bit and then drilled an oversized hole to allow for wood movement. Now it's time to trim up the top slab. Using some double stick tape, I identified again a center line and squared it off for a guideline. This was gonna make my two sides parallel and allow me to trim off both sides square and then again give a heavy 45 degree chamfer to lighten the look. And there goes my Allen key set. No wonder I couldn't find that when I was looking for it. I then changed over the runners on my multi-sled to cut the 45 degree chamfer. I did a great build video on this. I'll leave a link down in the description. They say the devil's in the details and I wanted to transfer over this little recess from the bottom of the stretchers to the post in the slab. So I used the top and bottom templates to mimic the same curve. After I sanded everything up to 220 and broke all the corners, it was time for the glue up. I used blue tape to protect against any squeeze out since I had already sanded everything. It was an uneventful glue up and everything fit great. Given how tight this joinery was and the fact that they're bridle joints, I don't think it needed a clamp, but I put one on anyways. I then did some final squeeze out cleanup, 
and did some micro adjusting so everything fit nice and flush. I did two coats of shellac sanding with 400 grit between each coat. Wow, look at that. That's pretty amazing. I want to thank everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. Check me out on Instagram at jcatsmoses and please subscribe to my channel. Have a wonderful day. Don't forget to check out those walnut slabs on my website. And I want to give a special shout out to Logan Goldberg. Happy birthday, bud. Stay safe in the shop, guys. Have a wonderful day. I'm Jonathan Katz Moses, and today we're gonna to build this Nakashima inspired shop stool. Mm -hmm.